back Fleur community. I hope everyone is doing well and having an incredible day as always. Now in this video we're going to address the new Fleur distribution proposed by Hugo Filion, the CEO of the Flare network and whether it's a good or bad idea. We're going to look at what the proposal actually is, what it means for you and finally if you stick around until the end, I'll give you my personal opinion about the proposal. So, let's jump in. Now, before we start, I would like to remind everyone that this is a proposal, and the outcome will be determined via a governance vote. The vote cannot be started until FLR has been distributed, which is, at the time of this video, two or more months away. So please take a deep breath and bear that in mind. So what is this new proposal? Well, that's a good question and who better to explain it than Hugo himself? Yeah, all the exchanges yeah. are, you know, everyone's terrified about them and uh, for good reason. Um, thankfully, the largest exchanges will probably be okay. Um, hopefully most of them will be okay for the next couple of months once we distribute the token. Now, I'm putting in a governance proposal that changes the way the token is distributed so that it's distributed through the FTSO, so that you get your initial 15% and the rest is distributed through the FTSO. Governance proposal will be out very soon. Um, one of the core ideas behind that proposal is it means that we don't have to distribute over three years directly to exchanges because obviously every additional month is another month that an exchange can go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we hope that most of the exchanges will still be around by the time we do the initial distribution. And then once you get those tokens that you're then safe, uh, you get the tokens from the exchange, you're safe. You can then delegate them on the FTSO to receive the rest of the distribution. Nice. That solves the three-year problem uh, with 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 distributing directly to exchanges, and that changes the risk dynamic. It, it, it basically takes the risk away from the exchange going bankrupt. Um, so uh, yeah, that 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 proposal is really important. Um, I hope it'll be adopted. Expect it will. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that'll be out very soon. Now that's the basics, but we also had a further breakdown from Tom who is the Flare Network Community Manager. And we got this message via Discord and it's available on the ftso.au website, which I will link in the description below. So the main goal for this proposal is to prevent people from having to rely on exchanges for their FLR distribution over the course of the next three years. Instead, if the proposal passes, people will receive FLR into their own wallet via another similar distribution method. So let's first talk about some of the things that will remain the same, the similarities. The remaining 85% will be distributed. Everyone will receive their initial 15% as expected, whether that's on the exchange or self custody. And also, the distribution of FLR will be over the course of around 36 months. So now let's talk about the main difference, which is the method of distribution. In the new proposal, FLR will be distributed via the FTSO system and to those who delegate. Now, let me make an important distinction here. There will be a separate pool for the remaining 85% of the FLR that is to be distributed, and it will not be distributed based on a signal provider's accuracy. This means that the rewards are fixed and entirely dependent on how many FLR you actually delegate. If you delegate 100 FLR to the most accurate signal provider and 100 FLR to the least accurate signal provider, you will receive the exact same amount from the FLR distribution pool, but you may receive a different amount from the FTSO delegation rewards, which is based on the 10% inflation and the signal provider's accuracy. So what happens if you are expecting to receive FLR on an exchange? Well, 
if the proposal goes through, those who held on exchanges would not be receiving monthly airdrops of FLR into their exchanges account for the next three years. Instead, they would withdraw their initial 15% to their own wallet, delegate it, and then receive their share of the remaining 85%. If you delegate and continue to delegate for three years, you will receive all of that 85%. Now, what happens if you are expecting to receive in a self-custody wallet, whether that's a Ledger, a Decent wallet, Metamask, or something completely different? Well, those who are expecting to receive their initial 15% will go through the exact same process. Delegate your FLR and receive your share of the remaining 85%. Now, I would just like you to note that the distribution mechanisms are the same for everyone. Delegate and receive. So what happens if you sell FLR? Well, if you sell FLR, since you would not be able to delegate it, you would then be giving up your future FLR distribution to the person who buys it. So that begs the question, what happens if I buy FLR? Well, it's exactly the opposite. If you buy someone else's FLR, you would also be buying their remaining distribution. And this is because you are able to delegate it and the distribution of FLR is based on how many FLR you have delegated. So that's pretty much it. Now, I know that many of you may be wondering what are my personal thoughts on this? And to be honest, I'm very much in favor. I think it's a very logical and beneficial proposal for all those who are within the ecosystem. First of all, it removes the reliance on exchanges, which may or may not survive the next three years. It allows the distribution to be received directly into your very own wallet. It transfers FLR from those who are inactive to those who are active. Now, more on that in a second, and this could actually theoretically boost rewards. It may prevent people from selling to claim the remaining share of their 85%. And finally, it will encourage others that are outside the scope of the XRP community to become involved in the network and purchase FLR to receive a share of the airdrop. Now, wait a second, did I just say boosted rewards? Well, depending on how many people are actually participating in the network and actively delegating, you may even receive more FLR than you initially hoped. This will be like distribution amplified for those who actually have an interest in the network and actively participate. The proposed distribution pool is a fixed amount and it will be shared between all those who delegate under the new proposal. If people are sleeping on FLR and not actively delegating, that's good news for you because their claim of the remaining airdrop will be distributed to those who take the time to delegate. It's that simple. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What about IOUs? Now, I know there are some people who have already received IOUs. A small minority of those people sold their IOUs and are now bitter. I would like to end by reading a tweet from Hugo himself. His thoughts have my full backing. He says, You decided to sell an IOU of an asset that didn't exist for a network that has a governance process that you didn't consider the risks of your actions is entirely on you. As you used BitTrue, you have also received Songbird in the meantime. This was not a consideration at the time of the snapshot and hence was essentially a bonus for you. You have some nerve repeatedly calling me names for making a proposal that I believe will greatly help adoption of the network. Flair's remit has expanded far beyond its original limited role with XRP. 
This expansion is extremely beneficial to the community. The proposal creates better incentives for participation and treats newcomers to the network with fairness. This was not a needed consideration when Flare was strictly XRP based, by putting them on equal footing going forward, hence aiding adoption and thus benefiting the community. So on that bombshell, I'm going to say thank you all so much for watching. If you're new here, please feel free to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm out. Mission control, we have liftoff.